Wakey wakey, egg and bakey. <laughs> All right guys, we are here. It is 5.10 in the morning. Actually, it's right around five o'clock in the morning. Uh, we have an early morning go today. Very early morning. <laughs> Although you guys know I like waking up in the summer, right around 4.30-ish, get a workout in. This is a little early for me in the winter. I guess it's spring, but yeah, we got a trip today, three day trip. We're gonna end up going to Cancun ultimately. We have 24 hour layover there or overnight. That's gonna be super awesome. But first we're gonna overnight in St. Louis. So let's go. I get to it first, I got you mad. I guess that when I get to it last, get it that I'm never going back. Get it that I'm never going back. Going up, going up, going up, going up, going up. All right, guys, uh, here we are, back in the cockpit. It is dark outside, still dark. It's uh, five minutes until six o'clock. Hey, uh, we got the ATC prompt. Here's our clearance to Baltimore today. We're cleared via the Broke One Maxo has filed 8,000 feet. We've got that set up here in the altitude. Uh, we'll expect 39 in three minutes. Uh, departure frequency is 126.8, and our squawk is 0754. I got it. Thank you, sir. Put that in there. We'll go ahead and accept it. That way, air traffic control knows that we have received the clearance. There we go. We got the Wilco right there. ATC light goes out. So I'll get that to the first page. We've got the route in the second page. So that way it's all set up for the briefing. Here's our route today. It's a long flight. We're uh, three hours and 42 minutes. Thankfully, we're heading east. So as you know, we have that nice tailwind. Right now, it's uh, plus 73 to uh, 73 knots. Uh, on our tail, so we got a pretty good tailwind. Uh, a couple of uh, turbulent spots here. This one's up to 38. We're going to 39, so we're good there. And here's one here, uh, 33 to 40. This one might be a factor just because we're climbing out. Uh, so again, we'll let our flight attendants know and uh, make sure that they're all safe. A little bit of weather in the Midwest here. It's gonna affect us going into St. Louis later on today, but uh, for this lake, we're gonna be remaining outside it. Um, we could kind of blow this up, see where their cell tops are, because we're gonna be crossing this line right here, and they're pretty low, 25,000 feet, 15,000 feet, so that shouldn't be too bad. Um, going into Baltimore, let's check out what the weather is doing. All right, the awesome deals, we get that digital ATIS, we could check it out, looks like it just updated. Uh, gusty winds, 290 at 16, gusting 23 but it's uh, pretty clear outside. A few clouds at uh, 25,000 feet. That's gonna be the route. That's gonna be the day for this leg. Again, starting off with a big leg. Um, we're gonna be St. Louis tonight. I brought my light jacket, and then we're gonna be at Cancun for 24 hours, like you guys know. It's gonna be super awesome. It was the only reason we bid this trip was for the Cancun overnight. But uh, packing was a little dicey. It is just gonna be rain, so I just took my light jacket. But of course, in Cop or in uh, Cancun, it's gonna be nice, so I won't need a jacket. So the struggle's real. <laughs> All right, uh, we're gonna get going, brief it up, and then uh, we'll see you guys in Baltimore. All right, guys, we are here in Baltimore. Nice gate. We got gate uh, number three, so it's really close to uh, all the stuff. So we gotta change plans. Once that gate pulls in, we'll get the end time. See what we flew all the way across the country. We did see a Max parked at the uh, other terminal, so that's kind of cool. Um, but we gotta change plans. We got two hours on the ground, so we might grab something to eat before we roll out to uh, St. Louis. And uh, when we do, we gotta do another pre flight on another airplane. So we'll see you at the other airplane. All right, guys, just like that, we're back in a new airplane. Just did a pre-flight. We're on a 737-800 uh, this time. Uh, it'll be my leg into St. Louis. Nice. <laughs> I keep forgetting. <laughs> St. Louis is where we're going. I know where we're going. Big arch. <laughs> yes, the big arch. All right, uh, we got the ATC prompt. So we'll click this. Let's see what we got. Clear to St. Louis Airport, be the Terp 7. Ramey then has filed. 
We'll climb via the sit except maintain 4,000 feet. So I dial that into 4,000. Next page says uh, expect 360 in 10 minutes. Departure frequency is 125.52. We'll check that here in a second. Squawk of 0513. All right, so we'll accept that and put it up to the first page. We have that uh, root page down right there. That way it's uh, a real good flow for the briefing. Here's the overall look at what we're doing today. So from uh, Biwi, this is our route over. You can tell we've got uh, a little bit of weather that we're gonna pass through right there. Uh, this top shows about 20,000 feet, so it's all pretty low, 25,020. Here's, uh, we could get a pie rep. 12,000 feet from a, uh, looks like a uh, 650, uh, moderate turbulence. So even though there's no turbulence plot, we kind of could figure it's gonna be bumpy in there. So we'll just make sure that uh, we let our flight attendants know as usual. Uh, it's a two hour flight, so we've got plenty of time to do service and all that good stuff. And uh, by the time we get to the weather. So uh, that's it for the route. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and brief it up and then uh, head on out. All right, guys, uh, we are about ready to start briefing it up. We talked about the route and all that good stuff. Um, hey, another great opportunity. I'm flying with another Czech Airman, uh, Dave, who is also a Sun Devil, Go Devils. Offered up uh, a little bit of insight. Um, kind of, he does a lot of initial operating experience, so he's got a lot of experience here. He's been at this airline a long, long time. So I thought it would be beneficial to you guys to kind of hear a little bit about what he's saying, maybe some advice from him. So here's Dave. How's it going? been here uh, 29 years before that I was at a uh, regional we flew beach 1900s uh, through the west coast uh, it was a US Air Express carrier by the time I left there they started off as an independent carrier regionals a lot's changed as far as pay and, and working conditions and whatnot but that was the worst paying most fun you're gonna have back then it was just just get it done bring the airplane back reasonably on time preferably without dents. Now, a lot's changed since then, but those are the people that you're gonna meet, you're gonna go through your whole career. It's a small community. I mean, I still keep in touch with most of the guys, you know, almost 30 years later. When you're the first officer at these uh, commuters, that captain, uh, he's gonna get a job somewhere else, or you're gonna get a job somewhere else, and you're gonna help each other along with your career or not. So, you've heard the old adage about, you know, don't burn a bridge, and. That's a big deal in this uh, in this business. You'll fly with people who are difficult and sometimes they're a little bit abrasive, but you gotta look past that. And uh, that, that guy one day will help you get your job or girl, and they may turn out to be one of your best buds. As far as getting prepared as a first officer, I was always as, as helpful as I could be. Uh, in a new position, you wanna figure out your job for the, whatever, the first six, eight, 10 months, once you figure out how to be the first officer, start looking left at that control panel and start figuring out what the captain does because sometimes it takes a long time, other times it sneaks up very quick. Commuter I worked at, was hired as an FO, they said it would be a two to three year upgrade. Well, we doubled in seven months. So I was on probation as a Beach 1900 captain. I was 20, 24 years old. It's a lot of responsibility, but you know, I think I was prepared because I really looked to the left. Enthusiasm will get you a long way out here. Doing IOEs and UOEs, upgrade IOEs. You can tell the difference between people who studied and people who learned the stuff and people who did it at the last minute. Just always strive to be the best. I mean, people screw up in this business and if you are not your own harshest critic, you need to look at yourself because that's the stuff that separates the professionals from just the people that go through the motions. So. I mean, that's, that's my advice on that, and uh, here I am 26,000 hours later, never talked to the FAA about anything, cross my fingers it never <laughs> happens, but uh, just be as professional as you can be from student pilot all the way up, just strive to be the best. Uh, so Dave, can you talk to him about what you see the future of the aviation industry as far as the airline industry for those that are in college right now or at the regionals looking to make that jump? It's a great time. I mean, I, I wish I, I wish everybody success, and if you stick at it, it's going to happen. I mean, uh, the hiring slowed down. It stopped September 11th, 2008. 
housing prices crashed, it slowed down. I mean, we're flying this week and here it is spring break and people are getting their shots and people are flying again. We're about to fly a full airplane from here to St. Louis and uh, I think the company and all these airlines is just gonna be more and more and more capacity. Uh, all the freight haulers, it's just gonna keep growing. It's a great career and uh, the big joke here is that the Lawyers killed the doctors as the great profession, and the lawyers killed each other, and we're what's left. So, uh, you know, just just stick at it, and uh, the rewards are coming, and it's 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 a great career. I encourage everybody to stick with it. All right. Well, hey, wise words again. You know, I always like to give you guys uh, the guys that have been there and done that have seen a lot. I hope you guys get uh, get something out of it, and uh, you know, again, keep. Keep hustling no matter what you're doing. If you're getting your ratings, keep hustling on those. If you're flying at a regional right now, be that best first officer or captain you can absolutely be. Show up early, look professional, and uh, you guys will have success. So, all right, we're gonna get ready and we're gonna head on out to uh, St. Louis. We're going to St. Louis. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you guys there. All right, guys, we're here. Uh, that was uh, pretty sporty. <laughs> so we made it. Uh, that was the weather on the way in. Our push flight should be popping up any minute now. Coming. Wait it's for coming. it. Wait for there it. it is. There's a the door. And bam. There it is. Two hours and 16 minutes. That was our block time. Nice crosswind coming in. It was kind of payback yeah. for the captain's landing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Did crosswind. You get your I didn't get the message. All right, guys, we just got to change. Change to change. Looks like we are must riding out to uh, Baltimore. Maybe to get us in position for tomorrow. Not sure. Uh, so yeah, so that's kind of how they they do that too. If we got to change the schedule, the ops agent will come up and uh, give us some paperwork that gives us uh, changes, and that's how we get alerted. So right now it looks like we're uh, heading over to Baltimore. So we'll get back into the airplane, fly back to Baltimore, probably overnight there, just get in position for our Cancun flight tomorrow. But hopefully, hopefully. Fingers crossed, because you never know. They could just change up our entire schedule for the rest of the time. So if you think you're going to the sunny beaches of Cancun, you might be going to the icy uh, throes of Minneapolis. Uh, we're going to find out what's going on, and we'll let you know what's coming up. Probably be deadheading. All right. All right, guys, here we are, deadheading. What do you think about that? Hey, dozing for dollars. <laughs> <laughs> So they rerouted us, uh, instead of going to the hotel right now, um, we're gonna be heading out to uh, Baltimore, and that is only because the flight tomorrow that we were supposed to operate canceled. So they gotta get us to Baltimore so we can operate that flight to Cancun. So they're sending us today. So a little bit longer of a day, but it's all good. Just uh, gotta get to Baltimore, that's kind of the main deal. Better hotel, it's an, it's an upgrade, it's a good thing. It actually is, yeah, we're staying at the Weston over there. You know me, I like Weston, so. <laughs> so we're gonna head on this deadhead, uh, hour and 30 minutes over there, then we'll run to the hotel. Um, unfortunately, it's a shorter overnight, but we get to sleep in, because it won't be as early of a get up. So that's good. And then one lake uh, to Cancun. So we'll, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> You guys are probably wondering why we're downstairs by the baggage claim and not on the airplane. You'd be, uh, your inquiry would be correct. In the airline industry, you have to be prepared for the unexpected. <laughs> so they were waiting on more passengers to come in from a late flight, which kind of pushed us up against our duty time. So they asked us to get off the airplane and we're actually gonna overnight here in St. Louis. So that was a change that happens from time to time as well. So we just gotta kinda adapt and, and overcome. <laughs> Here we are. So that's it, we're gonna go catch the uh, van, get to the hotel tomorrow. Now instead of going to Baltimore, then Cancun, we're just going to deadhead to Cancun tomorrow. All right, we're, we're not doing a whole lot of flying, <laughs> except for the flight out here. But anyways, it is what it is. We're just gonna do what we gotta do. So, all right guys, see you tomorrow on the deadhead, maybe. Unless things change, again. <laughs> Alright guys, we are here, just getting into the room, 
I gotta show you this room. We're here in Cancun. Oh man, you can already tell. Baller. I've got two more of these Cancuns this month. I've got three more Cancuns next month. I think we're gonna be all right. All right, I know what you guys are thinking. Man, get your shorts, get down to the beach but we got a workout to do. So we're gonna go get a workout in really quick. It's gonna be a quick shoulder one. Uh, I know we worked out this morning, but hey, we gotta do it again. We're here at a really nice resort. It's probably got a super, super, super nice uh, gym out there. But uh, yeah, that's our motivation. Get your fitness in and then have fun, right? So, all right, I'm gonna get dressed, head down, hit a workout. I'm gonna meet the captain. He already said he's gonna be down there. He's not going to work it out. I don't blame him. Uh, I am kind of nutty at that, but it's all good. So, all right, guys, uh, it's overnight time. I'll see you in the morning. One last look. Uh, it's beautiful. Awesome day, but uh, you know we're here to work, so it is time to go head out to the airport. We got a little bit of a drive ahead of us, so we're gonna go meet meet our driver and uh, head on out to the airport. Overnight was fantastic. Obviously, you could see this was the view from. Sitting in my bed, it just unbelievable. <laughs> Again, it doesn't happen a lot. Um, we do get these overnights from time to time. Matter of fact, I have my entire month is uh, filled with a Cancun overnight, so I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, I get to come back. You know, honestly, this is great. Um, and I'm not downplaying it at all, but uh, you know, all I do is uh, work out, find something good to eat, hang out with uh, my crew. This is about it. Probably not. I'm not complaining. For sure I'm not complaining because I could be in some other freezing part of the country right now. So anyways, we're going to head to the airport. Uh, we got one home. One and done. So that's always a good one to, to end. You always kind of want your hard days in the beginning and just kind of meter off towards the end with one and done is always a great thing <laughs> at the end of a trip, especially a three day. So uh, anyways, let's get to the airport. Um, we've got a few things to do because we've got to go through, um, you know, it's the international. So there's a lot, uh, a lot more protocols to do. So we show up a little bit earlier. And as it is right now, our flight is running a little bit late. So we'll see, uh, we'll see what we can do to make up time. But for now, <laughs> one last look. Oh, gorgeous. Just gorgeous out there. That's all right. Uh, see you in a week again. <laughs> Let's go. Hey everybody. All right, we are here. We're getting ready to part off that runway. You see Americans rolling out in their big triple. We're gonna take our 7-3 for four hours and uh, 21 minutes over to Phoenix. Here's our route of flight. This looks right now. We're just basically cutting across the Gulf and then up, up to El Paso, essentially. Then uh, on into Phoenix. No weather, uh, everything looks pretty good right here, uh, heading up there. Also on our sheet here that we get from dispatch. Looks pretty uh, picture clean as we call it. So a little bit different procedures out here uh, doing international. We can't get our clearance till 10 minutes prior. It's gonna get really busy, but that's how it looks right now. Four hours, 21 minutes. We got our anus out here, it's nice and warm and very humid. Um, but other than that, it should be a nice ride. Pretty full going back. That's a good sign. 
of course uh, in these times. So 180, we are on our way to uh, Phoenix. Getting away momentarily. Looks like a nice smooth ride all the way there. Uh, four hours, 20 minutes or so in route. We'll keep them updated with our progress once again. One. And that is how you do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, Sorry, not a whole lot to show you other than uh, the route and all that good stuff. Um, there is a couple of turbulence plots as we do get into uh, Phoenix. As you can see there, they've got moderate turbulence and into Phoenix. There's a little bit of weather out there, so expecting uh, moderate turbulence down in the lower altitudes. Hey, uh, so, all right, uh, hey, yeah, we're hey, gonna get I'm ready sure and you. head hey, on out. Was a <laughs> sheet that was like we'll uh, Southwest 180, like uh, clearance to Phoenix. We're ready to copy. Southwest 180, you are clear to Phoenix via Robert 2 Bravo departure. I expect it as Victor Oscar Bravo Echo Delta 2 Bravo. Runway 1 2 left, Uniform Juliet 8 4, Charlie Zulu Alpha, Uniform Tango 2 0, Uniform Bravo Victor Oscar Victor. Uh, let me check your flight plan. So it was 180, and I'll call you back. <laughs> okay, thank you. So okay, good stuff. Autorización Cancún, buen día, Volaris 141. Listo, está copiado el plan de vuelo Puebla. Okay, as you can see, uh, there's a little something going on, so she's going to check it out. But you can see the captain is also writing down the clearance. That's just to make sure when we get it over the uh, airways like that, we want to make sure that we're on the same page and everybody's got the same route, and we're all good with that. So uh, that's kind of what's happening right there. He's reviewing the uh, departure. Because we know the departure. Uh, Kiran, this is back on and, uh, 327. Well, when she comes back to us, we'll, we'll get the full route. <laughs> All right, uh, Southwest 180 is ready to copy new route. Southwest 180, you are clear to Phoenix via Bobet 2 Bravo. Departure as Victor Oscar Bravo Echo Delta 2 Bravo. Uniform Juliet 84 Charlie. Zulu Alpha, Uniform Tango 2-0, Alpha Lima Mike, Uniform Victor, Uniform Tango 4-6, Uniform Romeo Kilo Oscar Mike, Direct Charlie Uniform Sierra, Direct Delta Romeo Romeo Victor Romeo. Climb and maintain 4,000 feet. Expect final 400. And this quote 6115. Ooh, that's going to be a good one. Yeah. All right. Uh, Southwest 180, we're clear to Phoenix via the Victor Oscar Bravo Echo Delta 2 Bravo departure. Upper Juliet 84, Charlie Zulu Alpha, Upper Tango 20 to uh, Alpha Lima. Mike, uniform Victor, upper tango 48 to. I missed that one. Uh, that's uh, uniform Romeo, Kilo, Osco, Mike, direct Charlie, uniform Sierra, direct driver, 4040, uh, squawking 6115. So that was one thing, uniform Romeo. Okay, so it was 180. The red is correct, but remain with me just to check, do make a double check on one of the, of the fixes. All right. Okay, we'll remain with you, Southwest 180. Uniform Romeo, United 1019. Mike. Uniform Romeo, Go ahead. Oscar Mike. Yeah, I had a space in there. Yeah. But United 1019, you're clear <laughs> so to that's why, that's why Houston two via Nassau. That's, right. that's why we had two people copping down the one airplane. One Bravo, runway one, two. Especially when they do a, a, a big reroute like that, it can get super crazy. And then being international, then you've got the language barrier and all that good stuff. The so, accent. The accent. Yeah, there's, so. a lot, there's a lot to consider on that. Yeah, so that was good. That was a good, uh, good uh, audible and a good help out right there. So uh, we're going to stay on this frequency and uh, figure out the uh, route getting back. We're getting pretty close to push time, so uh, we're going to copy it down, make sure everything is in the book or in the uh, FMS, brief it up, and then we'll be out of here. So we'll see you guys in one. All right, guys, we are here. <laughs> Look at my little release. Tons of reroutes. Got a lot of it on the way back. Um, even in Mexican airspace, they change the sound around a little bit. So, hey, it's just the deal. You saw the ordeal getting out of there. It's 
It's kind of what we do. So that's why the importance of having two, you know, we've got a lot of additional or additive conditions when you're flying international, such as language barriers, accents, all that good stuff. So it's always good to have two. Uh, thanks to Dave. I really appreciate him giving you guys insight, you know, from a Czech Airman that's been here a long, long time. Thanks for flying with us. Yeah. All right, guys, that's it for this trip. Uh, we'll see Dave again because we're flying with him all month. And uh, they're all Cancuns too, so I don't think we're gonna give them we're away. Not giving them away. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we'll see him again. Again, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you guys' support. See you next week.